keep in mind the smart kids sit in the front row. So come a little closer. I, 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 I will have to say something about the smart kids. There are no seats in the front <laughs> row of the center. So <laughs> So you get to be the so the second row this time around is the front row for you. All right. We want to have not only this, this opportunity to be together, but we're going to bond together. We're going to have fun this evening, right, ladies? And gentlemen or two. <laughs> All right, so let me start by saying good evening. My name is Shirley Crawford. I am one of the co-founders of Collab Huration. Don't you love that name? Yes. It's the coolest name ever. I wish I had credit for making it up. I didn't. That'd be Susan. Our other two founders are Anne Manala, who you'll hear from in just a moment, and Susan Nolan, who you'll also hear from in just a moment. But I get the pleasure of starting off with you all to say first and foremost, welcome. We're glad you're here. And uh, we want to tell you a little bit about how collaboration came to be. So simply enough, uh, Susan, Anne, and I were meeting, and we were just talking about, we got together specifically to figure out what it is that we wanted to impact what we want to do. So back in January, can you all say January? January. Okay, it'll mean more to you in a minute because this is March. <laughs> just, just looking at the calendar, January was two months ago. We all sat down at Susan's house and we're like, what are the things that we see that we really, we care about, that we're passionate about, that are the issues? And everything we talked about kept coming back to women. I was discussing that even as I, you know, I do coaching and, and consulting, I have to go through weeks with my women clients just to get past these self-imposed or, or systematically imposed stigmas that they have about who they are and what they can do. So before we can even get down to business, we have to break through the ceiling. And then Anne was discussing when she's doing her financial consultations that she's sitting down with women who don't know where the will is. They don't know anything about their bank accounts. They don't know anything about their finances. And then Susan, well, she's been burning her bra since way back when. Seriously. And so she's always down for the cause of women. And so as we talked about this passion, we came together and created Collab Peroration. Here is why this is beautiful. Because that was January of this year. Here, two short months later, not only have we created this organization, but you all are here. And now you are a part of the legacy of that which will continue beyond just today. And also we have events going on for the entire month of March because March is... Women's History Month. Say it like you mean it. March is Women's History Month. That's us. All right. And so there are so many accomplishments that we have done and they may not be known about. And oftentimes we as women tend to hide our light. And so here's a chance to say, hey, I did it and I'm proud of it. And not only did I do it, but you can do it too. And that leads us to this evening where we're going to be having this panel discussion with these phenomenal women. And the thing that I love about each one of them is that they're just like you and they're just like me. And if they can blaze the trail, then you can blaze the trail. Yes? Okay, just making sure we're all on the same page. So when you all came in, you received this lovely program here. And so uh, when you uh, get to the first page, the first thing you're going to see beyond this, these lovely graphics is a calendar, all right? So this tells you about all the events that we have coming up this month. We have this weekend, there's a seminar on teaching you how to network based on your personality type, okay? Uh, and so I give you the example, believe it or not, I'm an introvert. I know it's hard to believe, but it's true. I have learned how to cope. And you can too. All right. In addition to that, there's a, there are financial seminars. There's an event celebrating the 400th anniversary of the death of Pocahontas. There's a lot of things going on. There's a Nabo dinner. There's also the governor's having his first ever Virginia Women's Summit at the end of the month. We want you to be available to be aware of all the things that are happening. There's a special event for our veteran females, either active duty or reserve. There's a kickboxing kickoff. I'm jealous, I'm not a vet, I'm jealous and I wanna go. Uh, so there's a lot going on. We also say if you know of anything that's happening this month in honor of our women, let us know and we'll happily share it. How we're sharing it, um, we have, how many of you all registered from the Facebook page? Crickets, crickets, crickets. I can't see your hands really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. So as many of you know, one, we have a website, It's collabheroration.com and our Facebook account is at collabheroration. 
So that's where we're posting the information. We're keeping you updated on what's happening. And we have something very exciting coming up, what we're calling the she campaign. Did you ever know that you're my she <laughs> All right. We're having the she campaign. And it's in two parts. And so the first part, which infects you, is that you will go onto the Facebook page starting tomorrow and post a picture and a one or two line descriptor of the woman who has made an impact in your life. If she's never been celebrated before, now's the time for you to celebrate her. Yes? That's right, that's right, that's right. We're all here together, okay? And even if she has been celebrated before, now's another, another opportunity for you to let her know that you're thinking about her. All right, so that's the Shiro campaign. The calendar's all in here. And we wanna let you know um, one of the main objectives for collaboration. So in addition to mentorship, accountability, which is something we seem to lack in sometimes, and implementation tools for women, we are also developing a scholarship program, scholarship program, okay? And that is going to be, so you all will get a chance to nominate individuals and then starting next year, because this is not just today, this is forever, starting next year we'll be offering a year-long um, uh, mentorship program. And it will be for in two, in two different categories, a young woman who is gaining her way, and uh, maybe not as a young woman, who is making some transitions. And what's gonna happen is that we will, we will customize the program to this individual. So if it's a college student and they're looking to um, become an entrepreneur, or if they are looking to increase their speaking skills, we'll start from everything from their dress, their speech, how they network, how they handle their finances, to if they're looking for a business loan, or they're looking to do a business plan, whatever it is that they're looking for, we're gonna help them create that plan and give them guidance from various mentors for an entire year. Now, is that not fabulous? Yeah. It is, I think it is too. I think it's wonderful. So that's one of the things that's gonna be happening. Also, when you came in the door with your program, you got a raffle ticket, yes, yes. We'll be doing the raffle at the end. Just so you know. So you still have time to buy more tickets. Yay! Okay? In addition to that, this is one of the things we want you all to do. For those of you who are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever your social media, we want you to take a selfie. We all understand selfie. To take a picture of oneself with your camera or apparatus, and you're gonna post it with the hashtag, you ready? Women first. That's right. Lovely Lauren has some little cards you can hold up as you take your pictures. And we want you to keep posting because we want people to know that the women of the Commonwealth of Virginia are here and we're here to stay and we're here to make it happen. Yes? Okay. And now, I like to smile at you. I'm just really happy to be here with you. Okay. And now, what's going to happen now is that the excitement is just about to begin. You should feel warmed up now because you, you got to liven up now. We're about to have this wonderful panel and you will have an opportunity to ask questions of the panelists as well. And Susan will let you know about when that's going to happen. But right now, I want you to start off. We're, we're just going to exercise our vocal cords because we're women, right? Y yes. And if you're a man, you're an honorary woman for the evening. We'll take you just, to, just tonight. Okay? All right. So we're just going to give a big old yell. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. We're gonna give a big old yell as Ann comes forth. She's gonna tell us about the speakers. The yelling is gonna hold. Oh, we're gonna have a practice round, that's right. Okay, we're gonna have a practice round. Are you ready on the count of three? We're gonna give it a big scream. This is our practice round, just to make sure you're warm. You ready? One, two, three. Woo! That's why it was a practice round. Okay, so then now what's going to happen is Anne is going to come and introduce our speakers. Once they've all been seated, because they're all so fabulous, then we're going to give a real great round of applause for them. Are we ready? Yes. Y'all need practice on these vocals. Okay. All right, so now we're going to have one of the other co-founders of Collaboration, Anne Manalo. All right, guys, we're going to be right back. We're going to go and grab Shirley. No substitute. 
Press my love Press the button I hope it's your recording Every word I'm saying to you I'm telling you right now from this day on hey. You've already weighed out the pros and cons I'm telling you know just the woman I want big check is going to come from and how long that's going to sustain you. Waiting to see if the West Coast would save me was devastating. I was pulling my hair out. I wanted to cry. I wanted to scream.
Well, all right, ladies and gentlemen. You know what? I did not get to introduce the show today because when I came in, everything was in full swing, and I just hit re- I just hit live, and I wanted everybody to just be able to jump in and join. But you know, this is Letitia M of MWHY Radio. We at are at the opening of the collaboration Yay. events that's going to be taking place from this great organization by an amazing group of women who, guess what, decided January <laughs> that they wanted to turn February out for Women's History Month. One of my favorite people is with me right now. I got the opportunity to meet her um, when she was the assistant director um, at, we won't drop any names, you know why? Because they're not paying me. But at a great place where you can do a lot of collaboration. Um, at And, you know, they love me, I love them, and, and, I, and maybe I'll say their name later. But for right now, <laughs> it's not about them. It is about you. So let everybody know who I'm speaking to. Yay. It's Crawford. Yeah. Hey, hello everyone out there. This is Shirley Crawford, one of the co-founders of Collaboration, and it's just really my pleasure to have this time to talk to Letitia. And we are so excited because this is just the beginning um, of not only Collaboration, but the work and impact that we're looking to do with women, especially in the Commonwealth of Virginia. But we're going to take it beyond there. We're, we're going to start at home. So I think that means by December, because if they can plan <laughs> this many events in just a few months, uh, the rest of the year. <laughs> They will be in Africa and the UK. Ooh, I am, like, am I sounding about right? I like the sound of that. I, I definitely like the sound of that. Yeah, well, you know, one of the events is specifically about International Women's yes, Day. Is, so yes, uh, we can And my stomach going. is growling because, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to steal a tape. I'm waiting for somebody to be like, oh, I can't make it. And I get that phone call. And, and Would you like to come? I, I'm, I'm, we'll talk about it. We'll talk okay, about okay, it. Okay, okay, okay. But I know you guys have a big, big... Um, yeah list of events that's going to be going on this month. Before we get to the list of events, let everybody know um, what inspired collaboration. Well, um, interestingly enough, so Susan, Ann, and I sat down, and it was our first time actually all meeting together. So previously, I've done work with Ann, previously, I've done work with Susan, and uh, Ann suggested, well, we all sit down. So, okay. And so we sat down, and we were just just talking about what our passions were, what, what, what were the things that we were really concerned about, and we kept coming back to women. And so for me, it was a matter of like, I, when I'm doing consultations with a woman, it, it seems to happen without fail that I have to break through these stigmas that either society's place or we've self-imposed mm-hmm. that we can't do that or that's too big for me or that's too big of a dream. I just want to have a little side hustle and that's all. Yeah. For Anne, she's having all these consultations with women with regards to their finances, and she's finding that women don't know how to write a check. Can you imagine that? Or they don't know where the will is. They know nothing about the finances, that either a husband has always done it or they haven't even thought about their own finances. And then for Susan, we always laugh because we always say she's been burning her bra since the 70s. And so we had this really like passionate conversation like, okay, so we're talking. What are we going to do about it? And that's how collaboration began. We, we said, we can't just talk. What are we going to do? Because I can't stand a conversation that has no point. Exactly. And so we were like, yes, let's do something. So two months ago, <laughs> we created this organization. And the rest is now officially almost history. I absolutely love it. What do you think your chief role in kind of spearheading a lot of these events um, and, and bringing women to this mm-hmm. forefront is? I think one of the first things is, is that we have... Even amongst women, we have this mixed idea of who we are. So, because here's the thing. So, the feminist movement in particular kind of shunned your house, your housewife. And so, one of our one of our big taglines, you see it everywhere, is that whether you're the CEO of a Fortune 500 or the CEO of your household, we're still here to help you be your best you. And so, that's one of the differences. So, you don't. There's no shame because you you work at home. That's a real job. That's right. You're, you're grooming the generation that's going to come up and make the next decisions. That's extremely important. Mm-hmm. There are lots of kids running around who don't have that grooming. So we fully support it, but still you have needs and we want to help you meet those. Or if you're trying to move up the corporate ladder. So, so the whole thing for us is no matter where you are, one, we're going to stop this competition that we're doing. There are more, there are more than enough seats at the table. We're going to smash this whole idea that's been presented. That there's only one seat for one woman, and therefore everyone else has to be pushed behind. We're going to kill this crab in a bucket mentality. Even if we have to, we have this image that we actually have like a crab like taking the claws and snipping out a hole in the bottom of the barrel and and going out that way. Yes, yeah, and so that's what we're all about. So making sure we all understand that we're here to represent each other. We're here to help each other as much as we can. And your success 
success. Like, look at you. Your success means my success. Yeah. I can say, you see what Letitia's doing. <laughs> then we're moving. That's right. No more excuses. We're all about action. I love it. I love it. Now, today's event, tell us what we have in store, because I know we already had the opening. Right now, there's a panel going on. That's why we're kind of talking a little low, but we're going to get in there, guys. Don't worry. You're going to hear from the panel in in a few moments, but tell us what else we have to look forward to today for that person who's listening live and maybe still driving around the downtown (laughs) area and just can come over here and park in Carytown. Indeed. So here's the thing. So you have panel discussions all the time. One of the reasons why this is my favorite so the people on the panel you may or may not have heard of them before but they're fabulous and they're wonderful and they're just like you and me so when I look at a Dr. Arbawal you know who who was living in India went to medical school behind her parents back oh, that is an amazing story, that is insane way. and then when she got there was only one of six in the entire school then her parents wanted to arrange a marriage for her and she refused can you imagine in the US we, we don't get it but really can you imagine saying I'm not going to do an arranged marriage and then they still had the family system that they have in India so it's like several couples all together and the wives all stay at home and the wives all take care of the house and she's like I'm out here saving lives I I, I don't have time to wash dishes but it was such a big deal that they moved to America that's how big of an issue it was in her culture that she didn't fit the mold and so technically she's you she's me she's all of us but oh my god she didn't allow even societal norms to block her and so and then like for gail black who is retired military one of the first um uh, the first groups to actually go over to bosnia and so you know women are not even allowed really to serve in that capacity even though we're included we're not all the way included so an amazing story that she has to offer they're all amazing. And so, or even for Casey Grant, who was one of the first African-American stewardesses um, for Delta. And amazing. so, yeah, and she, had, she has a great book, The Whole Nine. And so the, the whole point, and Chief Little Fawn, who I find so exciting. I love her hair. If you can't see her, I love her hair. It's just so pretty. Um, she became assistant chief to her tribe when she was 18. She's the first female ch- chief for her tribe since 1705. Wow. I had to bring the mic back to my mouth so I can (laughs) say it in the mic. Wow. Yeah. So they're amazing. But technically speaking, it's not that they came from privilege. It's not that they just had a hand up. They're normal people who did extraordinary things. Mm -hmm. So that means there's no excuse for you or me as a normal person not to do the extraordinary. So that's why I love them so. And that's why this panel is exciting to me. Now, we want people to be able to follow you, go to your website, learn about more events this month. I'm not going to ask you for all the events because that way I can ask one of the other collaborators yes. um, some of the events. But how can they connect with you immediately and find out more? Okay, so our Facebook page is probably the easiest way to get responses. And we are on Facebook at Collaboration. Okay. Just that simple. It's on everything. Collaboration. So instead of collaboration, guys, put that H E R there yeah. and you have collaboration. And, you know, and, and you're going to find out so much more. And these women are really making moves in Richmond. And like you said, it's soon beyond. Mm. You want to leave our audience with one last word from you? Okay. Here's the be all and end all of it all. As a woman, be the best that you can be. And just by being that example, You're already leaving a legacy that no one can touch and no one can stop. And it only gets better from there. Mm. All right, everybody, you guys heard it. We're going to take a quick commercial break. I'm going to get out there so we can hear what the panel is talking about, what the audience is asking them. Um, And we're going to be talking to one of the other organizers really soon. So don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. You're listening to the MWHY Radio Network. You'll be right back. Debonair Entertainment is your full service entertainment company. We feature bands, DJs, classical ensembles, and more. Whether you're planning your wedding company event, mitzvah, or birthday celebration, Debonair Entertainment has the perfect act for you. We also offer photo booth rentals to accent your event. Call us today at 804-690-7682 or contact us on the web at debonairentertainmentinc.com. Debonair Entertainment, your party starts here. In a fast-paced world, getting your message heard everywhere can still be a challenge if you're not connecting to your target audience. 
Allow MWHY Radio to assist you in getting your message heard on social media, video, digital magazines, on apps, and on our broadcast network. MWHY Radio's broadcast listeners tune in online through 10 terrestrial stations on iHeartRadio and during live events. Visit our Fiverr page for special offers throughout the summer to assist you in jumpstarting your advertising needs. That's www.fiverr.com forward slash MWHY Radio. F I V E R R.com forward slash MWHY Radio. With my sister, who was very much uh, uh, pursuing me, another thing was a war time. One time, yes. there so many people were injured, and my father was the only physician. He stayed up for five days to work with these people and two, three nurses. Wow. So I decided from that day that we needed a physician <laughs> to help, and that's where I decided to become a doctor. There were not too many female physicians at that time either. And not in medical school. At not all. medical school. So I decided to become one. Absolutely. And here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Many years later, successfully. Gail, the military didn't always seem like a friendly ground for females. I too was drawn to the profession by way of family. Okay. My grandfather served in. World War II and my dad served in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So as a child, I grew up watching these huge reel-to-reel uh, movies of his travels. When he would come back, we would sit around as a family when we'd watch the reel-to-reels. And so I thought that was normal. <laughs> that was my normal. Yeah. And uh, so uh, in addition to that, my dad was a pilot and he was a paratrooper. So we Ooh. also you know, watched him jump out of planes and then, you know, we would go different places and he would fly us. So that, I was pulled, I was drawn to the military by way of my upbringing. Um, it kind of picked me, I didn't really pick it, you know, <laughs> so that was something that I really wanted to do. And, and when I watched the Reel to Reels, I didn't see any women in, ah. during that time period. So I, you know, I, in my mind, the way my little mind worked is that, you know, I, I can do this. I can do this. I wasn't aware of the glass ceiling. I wasn't aware that women could not serve at that time with men. I didn't know the logistics of any of that. I just knew I wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I, you know, envisioned that one day I would grow up and I would join the military had no idea that my father would not have any parts of it, but, uh, you know. Um, was he resistant to your... He, he was very resistant to it because he didn't serve with women. There were no it females. It was a different in, world. It was a different world. So it was a hard sale, uh, to say the least. But I would have to say that the profession picked me. I didn't really pick it. <laughs> and, you, and you stuck with your gun. Yes, That's absolutely. Awesome. So as we, as we uh, look at the kinds of lives that you've blazed trails through. What do you think was the biggest challenge uh, that, that you uh, had in front of you, the most significant challenge to you as you became a female leader? What was the biggest challenge? Who'd like to start with that? Becoming a female leader? Mm -hmm. Or in your field, Casey, because... Well, you know, and, and, mine is a little diff different because once you got into the field, it was all about seniority. Yes. And difficult, well, no, because they couldn't deny you different your positions. Your seniority. Because of seniority. Date of hire. Exactly, exactly, the date of hire, seniority. So it became, um, once I found out about the opportunity, it was for me to, to put in the application or whatever. Now there were still restrictions. Uh, re they weren't hiring black, or they not, weren't promoting uh, blacks to be uh, supervisors. Manager, right. And managers. Exactly. So that was another field. Exactly. Um, but I was not denied different positions because it was all about seniority. And that, and that it was like the Railway Labor Act the airline industry became very much like that. Exactly, exactly. Who else would like to address that question? Yeah. I, I would like to address that as well. Um, 
I would say that it's breaking down the, the barrier of the mindset mm -hmm. and the stereotypes. Your dad, st starting with your dad. Starting with my dad, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, if a service member never served with a female service member, right. then they cannot envision a woman in uniform. Um, I had a distinct opportunity to go to a Vietnam veterans meeting. Um, they're held twice a month in Richmond. And um, it, got, it came to a point where I just had to take the floor and take the mic because the gentlemen that served during my dad's time, they really had no idea how that worked. They could not even foresee in their mind their, and their mindset just would not wrap around it. So it's just initially, it's just breaking down those barriers of stereotypes exactly. and the mindset. Um, and so that was probably one of the biggest things. And you know, I have to say this, women fight on the front line now. Yes. Women are in every area and every aspect mm -hmm. of the military. Absolutely. And we're only moving forward. We're not Doing moving very back. well there. Absolutely. And we're only moving forward into the future. We're not going back. So I think that once the people are educated and once they have an opportunity to see women in uniform and how they operate on a daily basis, I think at that point then we can move forward absolutely into the future. Any other comments from the panel? Well, Casey? you know, just commenting on that as far as women in position with my job in aviation, we just got our very first African-American captain. And it's, um, I'm sure she would have a lot to add to that because that is a male-dominated position. Oh, yes. And women are in that field and they are to be recognized. And, and because many of them just, came from the military with Gail, so. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, so we, the women, we are there. We're there. We recognize and we are not giving up that position. We are Absolutely. moving forward. Absolutely. Yes. Well, for me, uh, the challenge was the mindset of um, tribal leaders whose tribes were not uh, inclusive of women leadership. Right. We have always had female leadership in our tribe and women have always been highly respected for their leadership and mm -hmm. their advice. Mm -hmm. um, and so I grew up in that world, so when I went out and met other tribal leaders that did not allow women in leadership roles, it was really challenging for me. Absolutely. Because in my culture, I must remain very respectful oh. of those leaders, and yet at the same time, I must find a way to prove myself. Mm -hmm. To find your voice and to, speak to, your mind. Yes, and to, and to push my agenda exactly. into the meeting just like the rest of them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I found ways to do that over Excellent. the years. And, and what that makes me think, did you want to say anything, Kamala? Not particularly? <laughs> what, what that makes me think of then is the next generation coming in. How do you think their circumstances are going to be from what you've experienced? What are your thoughts or concerns about what's going to happen with the next generation of women? coming into these unusual roles? Well, I'll just continue, and I think that things have changed now. So we've um, made a So I opening. think that we've made a dent in that, yeah. and uh, a path for women to, mm -hmm. more and women leaders are coming up in tribes every day. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really pleased about that, and I think that we have made roads for them to travel mm -hmm. to get to those Absolutely. positions. Any other thoughts? Yes, I just wanted to say that we are um, leveling the playing field when it comes to gender inequality. Um, the military has had to make a lot of adjustments from the time that the, there were no women and then there were women that were called WACs at right. that time. And then they integrated the military um, services and men and women alike had to serve and live in the same space. So I just believe that um, the way that we've done it in the past is the way we're gonna have to continue to do it in the future with um, service members that have alternate lifestyles. Absolutely.
Absolutely. Anything else, ladies? Well, here's a thought that crossed my mind, too. Here you were paying great attention to the opportunities that were in front of you, blasting through obstacles as they happened. How did you do with that work-life balance, or that personal life, professional life balance, as you blazed your success trail? Well, it's been one of my life journeys, so I'm always very interested in this. Well, with the airlines, it was easy to do oh, yes. because you worked three days on, maybe four days off, or you could stretch it and have vacations. So you really, it was a glamorous life, it was a glamorous schedule. Yes. I've never had to do eight to five. Well, I did for a short moment <laughs> when I worked at the university at uh, Illinois. But um, that was a very easy schedule. Mm -hmm. And then for the women, uh, when you got married and had children, then you also had to marry the type of person that would understand that you were going to be gone a couple of days. And, and so that to cook partner, dinner for the children exactly. or change diapers or something. And so he had to be a willing partner and he Absolutely. had to understand what type of life he was going to have to contribute to. Absolutely. Whereas these other ladies, I'm sure that you were, it was a different schedule type of... Uh, mm, how about deployment, Gail? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I was going to say is um, that we have dual military families, and that means that yes. the, both the husband and the wife are both serving at the same time. Mm -hmm. When you have a situation like that, usually someone has to make the sacrifice. Um, in most cases, it's the woman that makes the sacrifice, okay? The family has to stay together, and we have to keep everything rolling along even when both service members are in uniform. Mm -hmm. Typically, the man does his share, but he doesn't carry the load in that case, and typically, not in all cases. And that is why a lot of times you have one service member that, and sometimes it's a husband, stays at home, and the wife is in uniform, mm -hmm. and then vice versa. But you have to work together. I'm married to a retired um, NCO and we talk about these type of things all the time because it, it takes, it is a tremendous sacrifice first and foremost. You have to be separated from your family, Absolutely. you have to for long periods of time and someone has to keep everything going. So it definitely is the same in the military. I can't say it's Better, more or less, but it's definitely a challenge mm -hmm. when you have um, two people serving at the same time and you have small children. I had young children when I was serving and I had to deploy and leave my young children behind for a year and that was a hardship in itself. So I can speak to that because I know what it's like to be torn apart from your family, but exactly. it's a sacrifice and you make that sacrifice because you choose to Sorry. and because you want to serve your country. An enormous sacrifice. Yes, it is. Is. Any other thoughts or comments? Well, just think about what she said and it is yeah. about the same because all families, your whole family is involved in this. Exactly. Because your children have to, and as a child being in the military, my father was Air Force, we all understood you stayed together, you worked together, and it was a family unit. So your concentration is even stronger Absolutely. than the average person, I think, too, yeah. Uh, uh, my next thought was, can any of you give me an example of a time where you had barriers that were placed in front of you and how you handled them? Barriers mm -hmm. placed in front of you. I would like to go first if I could. Do we have a few hours? Or no, few no, 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 it'll only take this. a minute, I promise. Um, when I learned how to drive, I have to admit, I was not a very good driver. And I really was not, but I wanted my license, and so I, I freedom. acquired my license, freedom. Um, but I was a point A to point B driver. And uh, when I joined the military, the first thing they, uh, they tell you to do is to get a military's license. You have to get a military life and you have to drive big trucks. Mm. So um, my insecurities were definitely a barrier to driving those huge five tons and deuce and a half trucks. I was like, oh my goodness. 
So I had to overcome tremendous insecurities when it came to you know, the job and I couldn't let m my insecurity of driving stand in the way of my career. So I just wanted to share that. And I bet you got those licenses, Kim. I, I absolutely <laughs> did, and I drove overseas and on deployment. Oh, wow. Overseas. In other cultures. On the Audubon. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> With no oh. speed limit whatsoever. Absolutely no right. speed limit. <laughs> That's amazing. That's an overcoming, for sure. Uh, to different countries. <laughs> yeah, through different. No, to, I drove from Germany to, to France and from France to different countries. Absolutely. <laughs> well, you know, we have a, I have a funny story about that. When um, I was driving with my husband in Germany, and the sign was uh, Osh something. Anyway, it was in German. And we kept seeing the sign, but we kept thinking it's the, it meant X. I mean, we just said this was for the town. And so we kept going and going, but it really meant exit. So, <laughs> so you, you were really wonderful to be able to do it, it, you know. That you could get to those other countries. That's exactly right. Yeah. 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 So, um, some of my obstacles were in traveling, because that's the thing, you're, you're traveling or you're going to work and you're always meeting someone new. So you're dealing with different personalities, different procedures, even though we're supposed to have standard procedures, everyone wasn't does, treated does the same way. thing to make the job easier. It was not the easiest. Um, but it was never, I never considered an obstacle. It was always about my determination to accomplish that goal because I wanted that job, I wanted the position, and I wanted the perks and I wanted the lifestyle. The so it was never anything that I ever thought that I would not do. Mm -hmm. I knew that I would be doing this mm -hmm. and I would do better than the average person because that's what we have to do. That's it. As women and as a woman of color, we always have to be Absolutely. the best that we can possibly be. So it was never considered uh, a true obstacle. It was just a slight challenge. Uh, of those, were there any gender-related ones? Were there any gender-related roadblocks? And it doesn't have to be to you, Casey, but whoever. Um, for me, no. I, gender, no. I mean, as far as people of position, yes, in the very beginning, because we were dealing with the racial issue. Exactly. And then gender, yes, being the captain, because yes. I, as we just said, there weren't that many female, the, well, there weren't any female African-American mm -hmm. captains at the time. So yes, there were challenges too, but military background mm -hmm. teaches you how to be tough and to stand up absolutely, and speak your mind. And we did, when we were challenged with the prejudice of um, the captains wanting to put us off the airplane because they did not want blacks to be serving them in, in first the class. Mm -hmm. And so the challenge of that, and as it was the challenge of the world because the, we were going through a very turbulent time absolutely. when I started flying. And uh, we were fighting for equal rights. Once again, women, we were fighting for Absolutely. Ladies, we were fighting for our equal rights. Way back, yeah, yeah, back then, as amazing. we are still doing now. So yeah, gender, because yeah, they do think that they are superior sometimes to sometimes. us very strong women. <laughs> That's true. Did you have that experience, Kamala? Yeah. Um, medical school or? Medical school, we have it lot of issues at that time when I went to medical school. Um, I think I was sixth female and throughout the medical school they harass you somewhere or other. Especially a um, physician who are your head of the department and there are a lot of harassment throughout the medical school mm -hmm. but you know we got over. Now it's not because you can complain about it. Mm -hmm. you can, you know, do all kinds of uh, legal issues, but at that time when I was going, very few could do anything. And very few spoke up. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think uh, in my case, I think my, I, I, my husband was my kind of teacher, <laughs> you know, so I mean, I, one time he asked me, I just he had a very vested threw interest him, in threw your threw him interest. out, you know, I said, you know, I'm not ready for anything. Yes. But then he approached to my mother, so that's the way I got involved. In <laughs> you can't, you can't do that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. you know? And uh, 
It's very difficult for women at that time to become a physician. Absolutely. You know, but, you know, in fact, one of the time in second year medical school, the professor was very mean, I think. And I got into the argument with him and he failed me. So I had to take the summer school. school. <laughs> so this kind of thing goes on, but not anymore. Subjectively yeah. and not objectively. Not, not anymore. I think people can fight legally as well as... I think more uh, are willing women to are do more it. educated and, and fighters. Mm -hmm. But I, I was the first woman in my family who went to medical school. My Imagine. father was a doctor, but not the girls. None of the girls. So... You know, that was I a, opened the door for the That was a Congress. woman first. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Chief did that make you think of anything from well, your life? Well, you know, many obstacles. <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> we could be here all night. <laughs> um, but the one thing that stuck out in my mind when you were, were asking the question was um, a tribe with no resources. Say that again for me. A tribe with no resources. Oh and um, not readily able to get credit sure. and uh, things like that. And so um, to learn how to create wealth was primary, was primary, my primary job. Mm -hmm. And it was challenged on many, many levels and many barriers to that. Um, but I was able to overcome them. Without that, you wouldn't have created what you did create. Without that, we would not have created the community that we created. Awesome. What an awesome example. All right, everybody. We kind of came to the back because, like I said, it is so many women that's involved in collaboration. Okay, it's three. It's three. But I wanted to make sure that before the uh, panel was over that you get to meet another lovely young lady today. It's, this has been such an amazing event so far. We have learned so much. I mean, you know, from a female chief, first female black steward, stewardess, um, one of the first black women who were in the front lines and then one of the first Indian women to become a doctor she was one of six in her college at that time yes. so just I mean just who's on the stage right now just represents you can find your niche out of any of these women I think you can find your story in any of these women but from the women on a panel who do we have the pleasure of meeting right now? Hi, everyone. This is Ann Manalo. I'm, I'm grateful to be here, and I'm grateful to be part of Collaboration. Um, being one of the three co-founders, um, we all have a passion for women on different levels. And one of my hopes and dream, dreams is to, when I sit in front of a woman, that she can take away from me after meeting me that um, she can do this. Whatever this is that she decides to do, that um, she can prove to herself that she can do this. You know, when I was talking to Shirley earlier, I asked her, what is her responsibility to um, collaboration? So now, Anne, I want to ask you the same thing. What, what do you feel after when you're meeting women, when you're putting these events together, what is your responsibility in this whole collaboration and making sure that, like she said, you guys are going to be going global? Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. You know, as we, as we move forward, the three of us, we're learning about each other. And isn't that part of what collaboration means. We all have different views on life, different backgrounds, both personally and in professionals. And um, sometimes there's a little bit of, you know, rubbing going on, but you know, that's part of the people skill that we have to learn as women as well, that we can do something better together than we can apart. And so you asked me the question, what is my primary role here in collaboration? And it's just it's it's coming it's becoming a it's a it's a transition it's it's a nice um forward progression of let's let's find out what we need mm -hmm. and but i feel that from the beginning um it really has been kind of um the financial piece of the women's wellness has been a strong pursuit and passion of mine um i want women to walk away from collaboration and and if she went through the mentorship um, um process with us for the next 12 months i want her to firmly know 
and understand where her finances are, how to w- organize them well, who to, to distribute them to. I mean, she she will have a basic understanding of budgeting and financing when she walks away from us. So I feel that's part of what I bring to collaboration. I absolutely love it. You know, when um, I met Shirley, she that's what where she was was all about. And I see that you guys are really cornering the market and making sure that you're taking care of the women so that we can continue to have future leaders. We can continue to have strong household representatives um, and that they're raising their children to know that entrepreneurship is great or corporate world is great. But like you said, whatever you do, make sure you have these resources. Um, Now, if we wanted to learn more about the resources that you guys are offering, where could we go to find them? Absolutely. We have a website that is in being slowly built by Shirley. She's fabulous at that, by the way. That is our strong point. www.collaboration.com will have a lot more resources listed there. But as far as March events, it's um, at Collaboration on Facebook. And so um, we're going to be developing programs as we go. We want to find out what women want the most, need the most, and we're going to meet those needs. I love it. Now, if you wanted to give a takeaway today from today's event, what would that takeaway be? Oh, gosh, that is a great question. As as I think about all the four speakers here today, I I just couldn't help but think of um, the audience. And I am hoping that each woman walks away with, that could be me. And as as I'm thinking about being a a mother, a professional, that that could be me making trailblazing as well for the people behind me. That's what I want them to take away from today. I absolutely love it. Hold on one second. All right. Now, what I want you to do, because I told Cheryl not to give me a light, I said, because look, I, I got to ask the rest of the founders additional questions. You can't answer them all. Give us um, three more of the events, and then I'll ask. Lucy, the last three of the events that you're going to be having this month outside of today's event. Sure. Um, let's see. I can think of March 11th, which is a very good one. It's the networking um, event on March 11th, Saturday. We're still looking for a venue, so um, we are working on that. But that is networking with Shirley and Susan um, heading up that. That it's a four-hour um, program. It's wonderful. Um, speaking to your um, personality, how to best utilize it in a room of people and how to get what you need out of it at that event. And then I would say March 18th is another Saturday of the month and that's um, from 10 to noon. Um, the venue will also be um, announced later, but it is a financial wellness class. Nice. And I take it that you're going to be Yes, ma'am. I'll be, I will be involved in that, co-hosting that, and um, I'm so excited about that. I get thrilled to um, help educate women on that. Um, I also like the March 25th, which is at uh, Victory Lady. Mm-hmm. Um, that is, I believe, a Saturday as well, um, but it's a free event from 10 a.m. to 2 o'clock, and come out from 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock to, to get a free basic um, circuit workout there. Uh, nice. Women are welcome to come in to check that out, and at 10 o'clock, it starts uh, kind of like the wellness program there. There will be a lot of vendors at the Victory Lady giving um, nutrition, um, um, health tips, and a lot of other vendors too, so it's going to be a great, great event. I absolutely love it. Now, I know that you gave the Facebook where people can join you, but give it one more time for us, and then we can jump back in there in that yes. panel because we don't want the audience to miss too much. Yes, yes, absolutely. If you want to find us on Facebook, it is at Collaboration on Facebook, so please come And out. if we want to connect with you, how do we do that as well? Oh, great. The best way to is to contact me by cell phone. I'm, a, I'm always a cell phone person. <laughs> love to speak on the cell phone. That's 804-931-3781 and Manalo. Absolutely love it. And you have been amazing. And I think all you women are just wonderful today. This is going to be so great going forward. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break and we're going to join them back out there and find out where we are. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Did you know that one in four people in America live with a mental illness? Do you have the communication skills to help out if one is in a crisis? What if it's your best friend? Maybe your son or daughter? While crisis intervention isn't new, the book Crisis Intervention 101 is. It's easy to read, includes links to two videos, and it's under $10. Get your copy of Crisis Intervention 101 today on Amazon.com. Because we all need help in a crisis. Benita's Tasty Tips number 11, Screw Caps. Screw Caps are not indicative of a lesser quality wine. Gone are the days when you could assume that a wine was good because it has a cork. Screw Caps started to emerge with a vengeance in 2006 and 7. The screw caps keep out air and provide you a better chance of enjoying a wine that is still fresh. So don't frown, get down with the Stelvin Enclosure, also known as the screw cap. Visit me at thevinewineclub.com for tasty tips in wine. That is awful to see all the people yes. there, and you know now there are too many of them. That's great. Thank yeah, you for the question. I have opened the door for them actually, and I have a, my daughter here who is a, a lawyer who has also has given me a lot of inspiration yes. to work here and do things that I really stay home and do whatever I need to do at home. But she and I, I have to thank her for getting me here and learn a lot of things. I think she got you here too. Yes. <laughs> yes. I would yeah. mom really simply talk about what she went through in my dad's family. Oh my goodness. When she was in position. That was really the Thanks, obstacle. Lisa. I'm sorry, just just real quick mom. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, I met it to a family where no women is still work. Yes. And they are business people, and they would not let me work. My, I was OBGYN there. I would come late home. My mother would stay awake. And one time they, I became a then health officer. So I had to tour, and they were afraid that they're going to kidnap me oh, and for the money uh, because it's in India. It's very common. And so they so would not let me work. And that is the reason I had to come here. And uh, I think in my, in my husband's family, I'm the only one 
and my family, my daughter, and my daughter-in-law, they work. Yes. No yes. family work in their family. No female. No females in the no family, female otherwise work. work. No, not yet. <laughs> but you're breaking that trend too. I am broken already. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm afraid to take them by six there because they are many traditional people and they follow the Indian tradition, the tradition. touching the, the field, you know, respect the Yolanda people heavily. You can talk to them back, so there are a lot of tradition that is very difficult. That and makes... that is the only reason I came here um, to work and start my life differently. Right. And if I remember correctly from some reading about your bio, that culturally also your marriage was different than... Well, I, 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 I was the first one who had a kind of not arranged marriage. Uh, my husband <laughs> was teaching in medical school, and uh, somehow we got, he got after me, and I was not <laughs> interested in it. But then he reached to my mother, and I was the first one who went out for dating without oh. marriage. So I had broken a lot of tradition. It's <laughs> 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 quiet demeanor. <laughs> I was, uh, yeah, I think, you know, you, you can do it, but it is very difficult. Though. It's very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the one reason we came here. Uh, because it was, they would not let us move out of the house either. To you go had to, to stay with family. And practice, so we didn't have a choice but to come here. And uh, in this country, when I came here, I never cooked. I never changed a diaper. I have a daughter who was raised by the nanny. I have to learn everything. <laughs> it's turned out quite well. It, it is very difficult. I mean, it was really difficult. And my husband said, after six months, I think we should go back. I don't think you can do it. <laughs> and how, how long ago was that? Yeah. Exactly. Some years ago. Yeah, it's done. I, I'm, I'm glad I have done That's what job. I was wondering. You're yeah. glad you did. Yeah, I did. Well, I, did. And I learned a lot in the process. And, and my, my daughter, about. you know my daughter very well. She came out wonderful. Absolutely. Uh, exceptional. Yeah, exceptional. exceptional. And my two sons are doing very well, so I'm glad Lots to be proud of. To be here. Lots to be proud of. We're very happy to have you here. Thank you. <laughs> Same without you all here. So ladies, um, I just, I'm amazed at all of you. I think you're all wonderful and really appreciate you giving your time for, for us tonight. So everybody thought we'd give them another round of applause. So I have a question, because um, most of the time when we decide to do something different, we always have that person that we love and we trust and we know they're going to support us, but they're the one person that doesn't. Who was that one person for Ooh. you and how did you handle it? In, in my case, it was uh, mostly my parents and one of my brother who was a physician. They, they were absolutely against it. Uh, but uh, finally when I did this, they decided to let me go. <laughs> I walked all the way to college, medical school, because I was the youngest out of 11. And uh, my oh, father was so retired, so I walked to the school for at least six months. Then my brother said, okay, you go to the medical school, you have decided, I'm going to pay for you. I think she's serious <laughs> about this. So that's where I became the way I became. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody? I would have to say it was my parents as, as well. My parents, dad. Were, yeah, my dad in particular, they were totally against the idea of um, my going in the military and my father, he passed away before I completed my training but my mother came out to support me during my graduation periods and she was very proud and she told me that she was extremely proud of me before she passed away so um, I, I have a piece about everything and, and that was really good so I, that's what it was for me and my parents. I didn't have anyone that resisted. My, yeah, I didn't. My parents were very... You talked them into it, basically. <laughs> well, you know, the travel. I was going to join the service, too. That was one of the options. Um, I needed them. 
I didn't. They had cutie uniforms in the Air Force. I mean, I was going to travel some kind of way. I was going to travel. But I it didn't have any resistance. Everyone was very happy for me. That's and awesome. my parents were very, very supportive. I had resistance. And um, it actually came from uh, some of the males mm -hmm. in our community. And did they feel you were infiltrating their world? Well, I think they just had been so used to male leadership mm -hmm. that that was what they were expecting, and they weren't expecting a woman. Mm -hmm. um, and they weren't quite sure how I would handle some of the diplomatic things that the mm -hmm. men had handled over the years. Um, but the one thing I had in my corner was that I was a mother. And every man loves mother. <laughs> she takes care of him really well. So, yeah, it was an obstacle, but I, I overcame it. Thank you for such a good question. We need to form a group of first. Even as a third woman lawyer in Richmond, Virginia, substantially, I can identify with all of you. I'm in my mid 70s, so I'm in that case where I'm thinking here to get here. Can't do the mic. We have another first on board. That would help. I have a question, uh, comment. My name is Latika Lee, and um, as the first or and the only, I was wondering, I'm right here in the center. <laughs> I was wondering, uh, how did you know to make the decisions that you made in your career as far as like, um, going up the ladder for promotions and decisions that you had to make in your career as far as um, what would help you out in your career? Well, for me, for the air Without a blueprint, without, without exactly. a manual and instruction. <laughs> and did you have a mentor to help you along? I think that I was my own mentor. I saw different opportunities from the different jobs um, and I wanted it. I wanted either the financial gain or the respect or the uh, responsibility. Um, it's a difference in management and flight attendant. To be honest, I never really wanted to go into management because they worked five days a week and I didn't want to work five That's days a week. Right. So I became a supervisor on the airplane. And I did that because I thought I would be good at managing people. And then I also... Um, wanted to be responsible for doing a good job on the airplane. And we had to do the paperwork, and we had to do different things. So it gave me the opportunity to accomplish those things. And along with that, it gives you the opportunity to do other things outside of the airline because of all the training that you were given, and it was free. And so I always just took advantage of all these different things because of that. Um, and I like being a supervisor. I think I handle my crew well, and I think we all work together, and we got the job done. Well, wow. the other response? The allure of travel was one of the reasons that um, I chose the military. Um, I believed that I would be able to go places that I would never be able to see. Um, it's very expensive to travel abroad, and uh, if you have an opportunity to do it, you can see the world through a different set of lenses. Um, it's not the same as watching it on television or reading it in a book. If you could see it for yourself, you could feel it and touch it and hold it, it takes on a whole different meaning. Um, so there are a lot of opportunities. I'm not trying to sell the military by no means, but <laughs> there are a lot of opportunities. She's just doing a little light recruiting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some uh, forms that you can fill out. <laughs> Enjoy the Women's Museum. <laughs> you know. there, you um, th there are a lot of opportunities that the military um, provided that the civilian sector did not provide. Um, it provided uh, clothing allowance, uh, food allowance, shelter, education. 
Education, definitely education. I acquired my bachelor's degree and my master's degree while I was serving in the military. Wow. So that speaks volumes. Um, and they actually support that. They, you know, the jobs that I had, the human resource jobs that I had, they supported you going back to school because they wanted you to be successful when you separate from the military. Unfortunately, there were a lot of people that um, have jobs in the military that they don't know what to do with after they separate from the military. So, you know, that, that's what the uh, allure of going into the military was for myself. Um, you know, a lot of people have a lot of different uh, reasons for going in, for staying in, but those were my reasons in particular. Mm -hmm. Any other? I, I have a question on here in the, in the aisle. Um, thank you also for your um, for your stories, for your individual stories. Um, I also want to um, ask you about how your individual stories were placed in a socio-economic, political um, kind of milieu when you were <coughs> having your experiences, and how does that then relate to what we're currently seeing now, the rise of feminism, um, the rise of activism, um, the, the new kind of political consciousness around um, how issues, especially political issues, are affecting women in particular. And so what are some lessons learned from your individual stories, and again, couched in a more um, general kind of socioeconomic, political kind of, uh, you know, community? Uh, and how does that relate to what is happening now, and what are the lessons learned that you can then um, help us as we go through this revitalization of activism, especially around exactly. um, issues that affect women. Hmm. <laughs> One thing that comes to my mind when you some of that you some of the things that you were asking. So let me just answer it this way and see if it helps. Uh, I was told I didn't know the process of becoming a captain, and I'm speaking of our first African American. And I was told that what happens with the airlines is that you become an investment with the company. So they expect you after a certain point to become a, uh, a captain because they've given you all this training. So therefore you turn that back around and then you become, um, that's, that's your company. You are invested in it and you want to make money. So for moving forward on a lot of the financial part of it and the, uh, some of the other things that you have suggested that I think that you take the company and you realize it's part of you being able to financially be able to take care of a family, to educate your family, to, and, and have a living doing this. So I just think all of the different advancements that you see that are there, you take advantage of it to enhance your life. I hope that answers some of your questions. Did it? Um, yeah, I just so I'm just like thinking about how um, there, the, there there's all this uh, energy around uh, uh, health care, child care, gender equality in the, in the workplace, and um, and what did you all experience as an individual in a context of other women um, that can help us as we make sense of the um, role of women in the current political economic climate. So yes, you did answer the question, um, but that is just kind of how I'm thinking about how how as women, especially women of color, how do we make sense of what's happening? Um, who, are our, who are our allies? Um, how do we, um, this is weird. this is history of reinventing itself, right? Like yes. the same things that you're talking about is what's happening right now. Exactly. So I'm just kind of asking for lessons learned to help us navigate what's happening in this Present country time. politically. We all went through. We had to have that determination and that fight to accomplish what we our dreams were. And I think that. All the things that are happening, if we can still instill in children, you have to dream, you have to work hard, you have to accomplish, and you have to be aware of what's happening in the world, what rights are being taken away, what rights you need to fight for, to be able to have your rights, to be able to accomplish anything that you want to do or be anything that you want to be. And I think that 
uh, yeah, we're, we're having to look at a lot of situations to say the military, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't be on the front line. And so when you, when you want your dream, you fight for it, you stand up for your rights. And I think that's what all of us have done I think so. is um, we've never allowed anyone to take those rights away. And for women in particular, we have to always fight harder, but we have to band together to realize that we are not going to allow anyone to take our rights away. So I, I, that's my goal, is just to keep people informed. And you have to stay informed, and you have to stand up for what you know is wrong, and you have to stand up for what's right. Thank you. From your moral compass. Yeah. I, I do have a, one situation where um, the hospital would not hire me because I was, they found out that I was pregnant, you know. <laughs> and they, they, they did not believe giving a leave of absence for three weeks or exactly. something. And um, I thought that's the wrong, you know. I, I think I need to fight this. So I have a lawyer. And you my daughter became a lawyer because of that. <laughs> <laughs> that I don't know the rest of the story. <laughs> the, but I wrote a letter, I said, this is wrong, you know. We have a right to take the leave. Of course you do. And they hired me um, after that letter, and I quit after 10 days. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to make the point. L let me add just to... There's a point. There's an important point. Casey and I both flew for Delta Airlines, and there was, uh, until 1967, so this is a history lesson for many of you in the room, until 1967 we were fired for being 35 years of age, or married, or pregnant. Fired. So it was the discrimination laws that came into place that eradicated that. You did add weight. You did add weight. I didn't do the weight thing yet. That oh, okay. <laughs> the, those three things, and then we were always weighed in for our um, monthly checks, and it wasn't whether you were a good customer service person or well-groomed, it was whether the number on the scale was the right number. And if it wasn't the right number, you weren't paid until it was the right number. So, so just, that's just something in your question made me reflect back to say, some of these things are now out of the way and are not in our way. There are other things that are standing in our way. And, and one of those, which consistently comes into my face, is we need more women leaders. And so to have women leaders, I'm, I'm really curious to hear what people think are the kinds of skills that women leaders have to have. I'd like to hear a little bit about that, if that's okay with the audience. Is that okay? What, what do women leaders, what are the must-have skills for women leaders? I would say ability, definitely ability, experience, vision, yep. the right character, strength. Ooh, strength. Um, women need to band together and not look at each other as a rival. Mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of competition between women. Um, unlike men, for some reason, um, it's it, it's very apparent. You can. It is so obvious in many workplaces that men just kind of walk in the room, throw their hands up, and walk out. It is just that bad. Um, my husband asks me all the time, "What is it with women? Why do women feel this way? I, why is that?" I said, it "Has a lot to do with the insecurity. If you're not secure within yourself in your own abilities." what you bring to the table, then every other woman is a threat. Exactly. Okay? It shouldn't be that way. We cannot form teams. We cannot have, you know, team work if we are separate and divided. So women have to figure it out. Come together. You know, don't collaborate. be... Collab collaborate. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, collaborate. Collaborate. Um, and join forces. Yes, absolutely. And that was part of when you were saying the different things, and that's what we did do. Yes. We all got together and we took it to court. Yes. And we won. And so yes. that they could no longer um, weigh us 
and that was the, you used to look at a piece of cake and think, is that cake worth it, my paycheck, or do I really want to eat this piece of cake? So when we did, we, we stuck together and we won that case. Exactly. Um, so. Is there importance in leadership, Chief Ann? Is there any must-have competencies or skills that come to mind quickly for you? Bulldog determination. Bulldog determination. Exactly. Yep. That persistence. No, no matter what comes up. Mm -hmm. No matter what, what resistance, what obstacles. Just tenacious. Yeah, just be tenacious. Just figure it out. Go around okay. it. Go over it. Get her done. That's a military thing. Get her done. <laughs> Other questions from the audience? I have a question for Chief Ann. The word is resilience that Suzanne Schilling is suggesting is one of the important words for leaders. Thanks, Suzanne. What was the other question? I've heard half. It's, it's a question for Chief Ann. Great. Do you have male siblings who might have also been considered for chief? Uh, excellent. Yes, um, I did. I had an older brother who was in the military and um, a younger brother. But I was the person who was trained. And I think my parents trained me not, and I didn't know it. <laughs> um, but I was the person who trained and had the drive and the passion for the work. Mm -hmm. And so I was selected because of it. Persistence paid off? Persistence paid off. Absolutely. How did your brothers react to that though? Did they resent you? No, they did not resent me. They were very, very proud of me. Okay. Did either want the job? Neither one of them wanted the job. In fact, nobody really wants this job. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work, Chief Ann. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work and a lot of responsibility. So um, I don't have a whole lot of competition for this position. Any final question? Because I then wanted to turn to uh, our panel and see if there was any closing remarks they might want to make. Hi, I'm Jamie Day over here. <laughs> How y'all ladies doing tonight? Hi. I want to thank you all for being here. It's awesome hearing all your great stories. Um, very inspirational. Um, I'm a holistic educator and professional organizer, um, and I work with a lot of homemakers. So I had the question, you ladies are all emerging leaders um, in the, your respective fields. Do you have any um, feelings or what are your thoughts about homemaking? Like, was that ever, do you, how do you feel about uh, women who decide to not um, break the ceiling and decide that their role is truly to stay home and educate their children? How does that make you feel? I say God bless them. I think it's a wonderful thing. As you said before, you have to decide what you want to do, what your field is, what your passion is. And I think that that's a wonderful thing that we are fighting for now is that you have a right to do whatever you want to do. And I think that, uh, thank God, my mother stayed home. And uh, April was always food on the table, and, and that was always made me happy to know that she was always there, the comfort of knowing your mother was there. I think it adds a lot to uh, our children coming out as stable as they are, whether it's your father stayed home or your mother stayed home. Exactly. Yeah. And so I think go with your passion. It's a choice. And, is, and the richness of our lives is to make choices. And it's one of the toughest jobs you'll ever have. You know that. <laughs> it is one of the toughest you know jobs you'll ever have. And one of the most valuable. Absolutely. To bring up the next generation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Any other comments about the stay home choice? Well, I was being a physician, I stayed home for a long time, actually. Uh, I worked one hour, one day a week or something, and I started full-time work in 96, mm -hmm. when my youngest child graduated from high school. Mm -hmm. I'm still working. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it worked out? It worked out very well, actually. Mm -hmm. I want to say, um, I'm sorry, okay. I wanted to say that, um, you know, a woman may start out in the household, in the home, as a homemaker, but like so many of us, 
we switch gears at some point in our lives, okay? You may be that homemaker, that housewife, for 15 years, 18 years, and then you shift gears into another life after that. So it's not, you know, where you start is where you end. It's not that way at all. You can have it all. It's just that people start on, out on different paths, okay? One person may start out that way, another person may end up that way later on. So, you know, I think it just depends on timing. Timing is everything. And um, women have to make that choice for their own particular life. I agree, and um, it has to be your passion. If you want to stay home and take care of your family, take care of your home, and manage your home, because that's what really it is. It's managing uh, a family and a home. And if you can accomplish that, after all your children are gone, you can probably run a corporation by the time you get done. Because it's a tremendous thing. Thanks, that really got a lot of us thinking, didn't it? Thank you, panelists. We have time for one more question. Bill? To echo what everybody else has said, thank you so much for sharing your stories. And most importantly, thank you for um, spreading the message of the importance of us as women collaborating how important it is for us to support each other as opposed to think of each other as, as rivals. My question, my biggest concern <clears throat> um, when I speak to young people, today because of social media, because of technology, because of everything that's now that we have, that the young people have access to um, in this fast paced competitive world, it's a little bit different than you know back in the day when um, you all were doing the trailblazing. Do you do you feel that you would be where you are today, or you have that added insight if the world was as fast-paced and immediate as it is today with access to information, and the, the, just by that nature, how competitive it is to um, get to where you want to be with your passion. And that's for everybody. I don't think I would be. I think that that's the challenge with this social media, which I don't understand, how you don't talk to a human and tell your personal business to one person rather than tell the whole world something. or where you went to eat and they show pictures of their food. I just think that's crazy. Um, so I don't think they stay focused. I think that's the whole point. You don't stay focused on what you want. And um, I, I think it's a detriment. I don't think that it's, it's really a good thing as social media. I don't think I would have had it. I would have been too distracted. I believe that social media is a benefit and a detriment. Okay, it depends on how it's used. Um, it can be it can be very damaging. Um, on the other hand, um, you can get the word out to the masses uh, much quicker. I personally think that um, it has hindered our children. I work at the school, Nottaway County School in Blackstone, Virginia, at the high school, and I feel that the young people have a problem communicating. Mm -hmm. They will talk to each other via text message from across the room. That is not good because where's the human factor in that? Okay, um, you. What happened to human resources? Uh, and that's really what my job was about. When I was in the military, it was helping the service members that needed help in the personnel arena. We didn't have social media back in the 80s and the 90s um, when I was first coming in, in the late 80s. And I'm glad about it. I'm glad about it because that it forced me to hone those skills. I don't think our young people have those skills. And if they do, they're not very good skills. 
Um, you'll have young people that will be in your company and they will sit there and there is no conversation going on whatsoever. So, you know, as adults, as parents, as grandparents, we have to teach them that. They have to form a human connection with one another. I think it is a detriment in that sense that um, the youth have a little understanding of what it means to communicate one-on-one -on -one and connect personally to another human being. Um, this creates, as we were talking about camaraderie, um, it brings us together around issues, it uh, supports us in uh, our thoughts and our agendas, and social media is removed from all of that, even though you can campaign online and you can have all of these people that support, but are they really plugged in to what you're doing? Where is the level of passion that comes from an issue on social media versus sitting in a group and talking about your experiences and what you could do to make things better? So I think it, it is good in one way that People are able to communicate all over the world. Information, like for the Native Americans, for instance, we can put information online that we don't have the money to put on a display at our tribal center. So it's good for that. But I want my young people to come and sit down and learn the things about their traditions and their culture one-on-one -on -one, so that that whole social network of a family because that's all we are is a big family. And that's all you are is a big family. And the family has been broken down in this country largely because of social media. And if you take the family away, then you destroy the nation. And that's a lot of what we're seeing. When Anyone on the panel like to make a final thought? Share a final thought? Closing thought? Thank you. <laughs> thank you for allowing us to come here and be a part of this panel. And thank you for taking your time out tonight to come and to listen to what we have to say. I, I just feel honored that I was selected to be a part of such a wonderful group of women and I now feel like I have a sisterhood because yes. we're going to exchange, we talked about exchanging information. <laughs> so, you know, building that network system, once again, it's very important. And it's very important to be able to get the word out so that you can take the word out and so forth and so on. So thank you very much for allowing myself and all of us to come together tonight to be able to speak on this subject, very important subject. Okay, while well, they're moving on to the next part of the program, we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. Are you frustrated, disappointed, discouraged with your life? Are you angry with God? What's holding you back from fulfilling your purpose? Are you struggling as a leader in ministry? Do you believe you have an end time calling? If you answered yes to any of these questions, tune in to The Waymakers on MWHY Radio Network every other Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are here to support you. Join us to get the answers that will prepare the way of the Lord in your life. Debonair Entertainment is your full-service entertainment company. We feature bands, DJs, classical ensembles, and more. Whether you're planning your wedding company event, mitzvah, or birthday celebration, 
Debonair Entertainment has the perfect act for you. We also offer photo booth rentals to accent your event. Call us today at 804-690-7682 or contact us on the web at debonairentertainmentinc.com. Debonair Entertainment, your party starts here. This Debonair is Entertainment is your full-service entertainment company. All right? And so we clearly have a legacy to build upon. And so once again, I take you back to your lovely programs. Um, once you turn the first page, there's a calendar. I want to see each and every one of you with it at, 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 at as, as many events as possible, and not just you. We've been talking about the social network where here's the time where you can put it to good use by one, using the hashtag, what did we say it was? You better know it, yes. Hashtag women first, right? In addition to that, tell your friends, tell your family that they're missing out on some wonderful things, but now you're gonna tell them what they missed out on, right? Yes. Are you really, are you sure? Let me ask it again, we're going to make sure. So now, you're going to leave here and tell everyone you know about all that you experienced here tonight, yes? Yes! Okay, that's much better, much better. And I want to say, because we're efficient women, we are on schedule. I just want to share that. <laughs> all right, so what's going to happen now, I want you to, one, revisit the calendar in the front of the book. I told you about our solid version program. All right, so we coming back from MWHY Radio, Letitia M, and I'm standing with one of the final founders. I was finally able to get her. She was up there with the panelists, so I think it would have been rude to walk on a stage and try to interview you while you were talking to the ladies, right? <laughs> so just, you know, um, we learned about um, celebration, collaboration, in celebration, okay. We were celebrating. I know. <laughs> and we also learned about a lot of the events that you ladies are going to have this month. So what I want to hear from you is just what do you think about today's event and how the audience responded to the panelists? I found the audience being very involved with the panelists. Their questions were deep and thoughtful. And, and they really wanted to hear more, even after we asked quite a few questions. They Absolutely. really wanted to go to depth. Absolutely. So there were a, really an animated response to the panelists and I think the panelists each had such an interesting trail that they blazed that mm. there was plenty of room for good questions. And you know what I just did? I just got out my raffle ticket and I think she probably called it. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I think, no, no, no. I think they called somebody else. So we're okay. I'm okay with giving away. But no, this interview is more important. Thank Trust you. me. Thank so, you know, when um, we talk to women who are just trailblazers the way that they are. Yes. Um, you know, we want women to be able to know, like um, when I was talking to her earlier, that it's not about your celebrity. No. It's about what the kind of moves that you're making in your it's life choices. and in other people's lives. You know, so what kind of advice are you giving to that woman who might be stagnant right now where she is? She, she, she doesn't see that she has this great potential that's already been built inside of her. And I, I think that until women really understand that they have a choice, that they're not stuck somewhere, mm -hmm. that there are other possibilities and opportunities out there if they'll just look for them, mm -hmm. that I think they can feel kind of stuck in the weeds and, and have narrowed their vantage point so small mm -hmm. that, they, that they don't know the, 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 the breadth of the possibilities. And I think all of these ladies suggested in their individual paths that... They were the big thinkers. That's right. That they could see someone, even though there wasn't anybody that looked like them in this other role, they could still project the possibility for themselves. That's right. And it reminds me of the Chinese 
um, symbol of change, which is risk and opportunity. You have to be willing to risk, and you have to be willing to see an opportunity. That's right. So it's it's opening your eyes and opening. I think the two ladies that talked about wanting to travel and the difference yes. it made to be yes. exposed to other countries and cultures. That changed her lens. She yes. used the word lens. That that showed that those kinds of broadening experiences mean we have to take a risk. Yes. And then make some good choices. And you know what? The same young lady said something else interesting um, that really stuck out to me. And um, when we go out and we do a lot of teaching and things like that, it's something that we have to realize sure. when somebody is in their environment. However they are raised, whatever they see, whatever is in their neighborhood, that's all they know. So she said, you know, she thought looking at the three millimeter film was normal because, you know, that's what her grandfather would sit down and show her. And so she thought that was normal. So when you change what you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you taste, you know, you can be in a bad environment, but it's what you're putting into your system that makes that difference. Mind. That's right. Putting into your That's thinking. right. Changing that mindset. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. So, so how is collaboration going to help with mindset management? Well, here's what happens. What, what Shirley and Ann and I noticed in so many environments, some fabulous conferences would take place. Women would be so excited. Their enthusiasm would be on the roof. You could hear the energy. You could, you, it literally bubbled up. Mm-hmm. And then they left and got back to work and got back into their place and it no all change. disappeared and there were no changes even though we had offered well we can do this afterwards because someone was passionate about this someone was passionate about that someone was passionate about something else we can help you mm. move that to action so our whole basis and foundation is we want to move enthusiasm to action yes in whatever realm you want to do it we know how to mentor we know how to hold accountable. We know how to plan strategically so that we can help you build your direction mm. into whatever that passionate area is, that sweet spot. But it doesn't happen unless you make a choice and unless we move to action together. And so we think yes. as we were perusing, and I'm the elder of our trio, as we were perusing, why haven't women gotten further? We talk about we don't always move it to action. Mm-hmm. So we want, the dialogue is important. We have to share these stories or we don't have our inspiration yes. and our energy. Once we have that, we have to decide what really means the most for us. If it's staying at home, that's fine. That's right. We, that's, we, right. We, 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 that's a viable choice <laughs> and a wonderful choice. What's more important than our next generation? That's right. And it's as much leadership and management as you'll ever need anywhere, yes. too, because that's yes. all included. But whatever that choice is... If, it, if there's something keeping you from moving there, maybe you just need somebody to mentor for you, you for a while. Yes. Maybe you need to be held, held accountable for making your action steps. Mm-hmm. Maybe you just can't solve something that's gotten an obstacle in your way. Yeah. That's what, those are the three, we think, basic avenues that we help people through. Now, I asked each lady already, you know, as far as the foundation of this organization is, what do you see your key factor, what you're contributing to that person is going to be? Individually. That's right. Yes. And I come from, actually, uh, Casey and I used to both work for Delta Airlines. And so we shared aviation. And when I was involved in it, it was at a growth and development time at Delta. We opened up London and Paris and Frankfurt. So I did a lot of training, mm-hmm. so management and leadership became my keynote and my keystone. And I've been te- te- teaching people in the corporate world and in the work world management skills and yes. leadership skills. Yes. So I want to teach women leaders. There we go. <laughs> that's, there we go. That's my sweet spot. I that's right, because, I mean, you can be born a leader, but you still have to be molded. You still need a mentor. You still and need to still learn. To I'm just yes. aware of what you're doing. And Love sometimes... It. Sometimes they've had a bad example at work, and they'll never do it that way. <laughs> and sometimes they've never been really well managed yes. or well led, and so they don't really know what it's like. Mm. And so, and sometimes that's where they lose their engagement in the organization. Yes, There's yes. There's about a seventy-five percent disengagement rate mm. in most organizations, which means we are hiring people, paying them, benefiting them, and they're not bringing their best to work. That's right. And it's a terrible waste for them and their mind and us That's right. as an organization. 
it's losing that intellectual capital. We, we're not getting, we're not getting it. But if it was well managed and led, we'd be soaring, and our country would be out of the doldrums of education where there we are go. now. There in we go. Every socioeconomic area. Because I feel as though the the ones who get underpaid are our teachers, are you know the people who are supposed to be pouring into us, and then people who are of a celebrity type standing. People are willing to throw thousands. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> much amazing for very long, but they're getting the biggest paycheck the ba- the biggest world. paychecks. Well, you know what? I know you got to go back on stage, but thanks so much for taking the time to talk to me. All right, darling. <laughs> Well, everyone, I know that this has been an amazing event. Again, you want to go to their Facebook page, Collab Her Ration. Remember, just replace the middle with H-E-R, and you'll be able to learn about all of the events that's going to be taking place this March, because you didn't get the calendar like I did. I'm also going to be posting it on our website. Um, you can follow us on Twitter, MWHY Radio, to learn more about what Collab Her Ration is going to be doing. They have events March 8th. March 11th, March 18th, March 25th, and I think they're trying to squeeze one more in there. (laughs) So we definitely want to make sure that if you're in the Richmond area, that you are joining these lovely women right here. So we're going to play out on some music, and then we're going to close it out while they're closing the program so I get to enjoy a little bit of it myself. Again, thanks so much for tuning in. This is Letitia M. of MWHY Radio saying goodbye. I've been drinking, I've been drinking I get filthy when the liquor get into me I've been thinking, I've been thinking Why can't I keep my fingers off it, baby? I want you, nah, nah Why can't I keep my fingers off it, baby? I want you, nah, nah Cars on ice, cars on ice Feeling like an animal with these cameras all in my grill Flashing lights, flashing lights You got me faded, 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 baby I want you, nah, nah Can't keep your eyes off my fatty daddy I want you, nah, nah Rum can We be all